team, they have a whole lot there. And it's real easy to download them and, and, and make them workable for you. Uh, there are ways, we'd have to talk another time, about creating your own master slide. And, 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 but that, that takes more work. So I, I tend to just use what is there. The other one that's useful is the third from the bottom. It says, very useful set of tips. It's from a consulting company. And the guy who talks about, talks about not only creating PowerPoint, but general um, presentation tips and such. And it's, it's really pretty good. And believe it or not, the one below that, from a governmental agency, no less, <laughs> is from the Association of, National Association of State Legislatures. And uh, I don't know, I suppose if you, if you want it, you've got to really jazz it up if you want to get a tax proposal. <laughs> and then, of course, there's just all kinds of stuff on YouTube. Now, before we start, I should tell you that um, I work from an old, um, older program. I mean, I, I use PowerPoint 2010. You no doubt have something more recent. So you, that all that means is that you will have far more options than I will ever have on this. Um, but the fundamentally, the processes and the thinking behind the processes are the same. So what I'm going to do is tell you this point. This is my disclaimer: is tell you that this is the way I do it. And some people have asked, like. Uh, uh, Chuck there asked once about how do you how do you show a path? I showed where Jim Kleiman, an old mountain man, came up out of born in Virginia and came up and lived for a while in New York and then moved west and eventually ended up in Illinois. And I can create a path to show you where the, the path of his of his life. Um, so Chuck asked how you do that, and I almost promised to show him, and this has been the first opportunity, and some others have asked about some of the things I do, and I, I don't always know why I do those things, but, but they, they seem to be well received. Uh, one of the things starting with is, you can see on the screen up here, with a, with a blank, on, um, you see the grid lines. I'd always encourage you to use the grid lines. For me, they are essential because they allow me to make sure that things are lined up. And if I've got two pictures or two rows of text or a picture of a row of text, I want to make sure that they, they seem symmetrical, then just turning that grid on makes all the difference in doing it. Karen? Yeah. All right. We are video recording this. We're going we're gonna to post this on the website. Uh -huh. this website. I, if you will sign in, and give your email address. I will email you and tell you where are still coming out. Okay. Sometime so, at the end. Don't don't pass it around now, please, because okay. it'll be distracting. All right. That's okay. Right. Uh, on this, uh, you can see what the it is. All all you need to do is you've got this line. Now I'm I'm. You got to tell me as we go along. You know I'm way past that, and, and I'll I'll try to speed the thing up. Uh, but your view. If my machine will work, allows you to make all kinds of things, include grid lines. And the grid line, you can also have, if you need that sort of thing, a ruler. I tend not to use the ruler because it, it shrinks the size of the, of the slide. So, but the grid lines are, for me, essential. So that's, that's, that's the first thing. Now, the, the second thing is uh, try to get uh, some kind of logo or something that will tell you about what we're doing and for whom we're doing it. So we're bringing, get the, I try to get the, the text to fade in and to sit with, with the picture. Today is going to be an iceberg presentation. Obviously, all we're going to do is skim the surface that there is so much there and Really, if you have an artistic bent and talent bent, you go way beyond anything I can show you or any of the tutorials can show you. So, I use this just because I love this picture. And I think it communicates uh, clearly. And that's what PowerPoint is about. If I think if it's done right, 
is that it's a visual aid, it's a visual communication. It doesn't deliver the information. It helps people make connections with the information, visualize the information, internalize the information by linking it to things with which they're already familiar. But it is not the source. You are the source, not, not, the, not the pictures. If, you, if, if somebody said, well, what do we need you for? then you've got too much on your slides. <laughs> uh, today's goal is I want to give, share these general thoughts, then I'll show you how to bring in text in different ways, bringing in pictures, and vitalizing maps and, and journeys. And set. They are, seem to be, when you got an interest in history, maps and journeys tend to be a part all the time. Uh, so, let, let me start with the general thoughts, which is exactly what you have on handout that I gave you. I want to talk for a minute about templates, about limiting text, about using big fonts. Um, the worst thing you'll hear, and you've heard it when you've gone to presentations, is I know the people in the back aren't going to be able to read this. <laughs> you know, they, they, what you, what you got it up. Yeah, it, it's, it's awful. And then, again, visualizing. And we'll take a quick look at those. So how large a font do you use? Well, I'll show you in a second. You never want to go, if you can, um, lower than 28 point. 32 point is, is best. Um, let me see what... See, this, is, this one's large. If I look at this, what have I got on here? This is a 60. The word templates there. Is it? And, and the point is that you can... You can see that from the back of the room, real clearly, there's no doubt there. All right, now with, with templates and with fonts, if you want to go to the largest, I'll show you some in a minute. With templates, this is just me. You, you have to decide your best. But particularly, that's why I wanted to let the curtain open. In a room like this that has so much light, if you've got a white background template or a light colored template background, it's going it's to wash out on you. But if you get something like this one, you see, um, then you got you, you got the, the contrast of yellow or white or something else that stands against it. You also want to try to get a template like this that doesn't steal some of your space. Now, some of the times when you go to pick a template, they have some really charming things. And if you're doing a, 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 a presentation on... Um, the ocean or something. There's going to be a temptation to, you know, have one that has a curling wave in the corner or something like that. Avoid that temptation because it reduces the amount of room for you to put your thoughts in visualization. Here's a couple of uh, space stealing slides. See, so just look at that. Um, the, the blue across the bottom with this one. That's essentially lost space, and the same thing up here. So I'd like to go with something like this, and if I, for a particular slide, want to have a blue line or something, I can draw that across there and get what I want. What I really want to recommend to you is that you use all the place for your thoughts and visions. Also, a thing like this, uh, when you use the dark with a white or yellow text, what happens is it, it, it has a, something of a, an effect, I, it, it appears to me, in that it makes things kind of pop out and from out against. It's not exactly a painting of Elvis on black belt, but, yeah, but, it, but it, it pops and it makes visuals pop. Now let me show you the difference here. I'm going to show you a bust of Benjamin Franklin on the white one with limited space. That's not bad, but now look at old Ben on this one. Mm -hmm. And you see, you see the difference, and, and it's, it's much more engaging. You can, you're about ready to talk to him right there. So it's a, a thought. So the encouragement is go with a dark template and then put things against it that will, that will pop out. If you want something uh, silhouetted against white, you can always draw a white rectangle, oval, square, circle, whatever you want to make it to make it work. This is probably the most important thing. Limit the text. Be parsimonious. Try to communicate with the fewest possible words. 
The reason is that the words on the screen are not supposed to deliver the information to your audience. You deliver the information to your audience. What that's on the screen is a trigger. I see the word on the screen and that tells me what I'm supposed to talk about. This is getting more difficult as I get older, because I forget how the word meant, you know. But that's what it's that's what it's for. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, here is a, a kind of thing you, you see. This is from a consulting company in Australia. And this is something they prepared to try to attract a lot of clients, to make a proposition to clients. The first is, I, Jake, can you read it? Nope. No. Okay, so then it's totally useless. If you're close enough here that you can read it, then you start reading it. If you're reading it and I'm talking, you're probably not gaining the most out of either. Because I'm interfering with your reading, and your country and that makes you miss things that I tell you. And it's just, it's awful. But now look what they, look what they want to show you, because this is important. Uh, we want to leverage your investment. Okay, there's a key thing. Um, we know every business is different, so we want to get a tailored solution to your business requirements. And we want to, to be able to give you flexible and tailored solutions. We have a proven track record of implementing our technology. And we want to be able to reduce your costs and improve your processes. Now watch how much better it is if you just make it that way. First, it's easier to see. It stands out, uh, the white against the black. The font is big enough. You can read all that from the back wall, right? Yeah. Okay, that, if you did nothing else, is an improvement. You see, we're going to help you leverage your investments. Now that tells me i got to talk with you. I'll tell you all the ways in which we can do that. We're going to create for you a tailored, flexible solution for your problem. Then I talk about what that means and how we do it. So, this is much, much better. And look how much uh, more economic it is. But we can improve this again by bringing in each of those separately. A lot of problems with putting everything you want to say on a slide up like this all at once is that the audience is reading the whole thing. And you want them to listen to you talking about how you're going to leverage investments. And they're down there thinking, I want to reduce my costs. So they're, they're, not, they're not staying with you. So what you can do then is go to the next step, and I'll show you this more later, is we just take them out and we bring them in one at a time. That's all there. Now that's, that's focused your attention. We're going to help leverage your investments and that's, that's the way we're going to do it. Now I'm going to go to the next thing. So I, want, I don't want you to forget this, but I don't want it to command your attention either. So we give it and we bring up the next one. The tailored, flexible solutions. Now I'm going to talk about that. I need three words to tell me all the hundreds of words that I can then go and use to explain it to you. And then we do that again when I explain how we will reduce your cost. And then again when I really want you to believe the things I told you previously, I'm going to talk about our proven tracker and name companies that we have helped and individuals we have helped. And, and want you just to see the difference between that and, uh, and let me get this back up here where you can see it, and this, oh, yeah. I mean it is, it is uh, striking. This one is better, but it's still everything up at once. It's distracting, can't keep people focused. This then is the one you want that will allow you to control what's going to be talked about and in what order and what we're going to emphasize at the moment. Now a key in this, as you'll see, is the size of the font. You want a big, easily read font, as, as big as you can get it. Clear ones. Um, Times New Roman and other ones are sometimes difficult to read. So you want something that, that's a uh, maybe a step short of block printing. And Tahoma, Ariel, and Helvetica are, are that. They're clean, they're crisp, they're, they're, they're sharp. And you can see 
how much the difference is in size as we work our way up and how much easier it is to read. You want to use the biggest font that you can use for your particular purposes. Now, let me show you on this one. This one is um, 60, this is 48, and then these are what they say they are. Um, and so it, it trims down, but even the smallest on here is clear from the back. Okay, so we have, we, we'll go there. <coughs> now, the, the set, the, the default that comes with your PowerPoint program is usually a slide that um, has a, a box, a text box across the top for, a, for a title, and then one for text. And usually that is by default bulleted. If you like bullets, use it. I find my sense is that bullets take away from the sense that I'm telling you a story. Um, because it, it seems mechanical. And now, if I want to tell you that step one in a technical process is this, then I will either put a bullet or I'll put a number by it. So you see that there's a progression. But with somebody's life, or the tail of a, an event or something, or like next week I'm going to talk about the, the signers of the Declaration of Independence. I mean, these were, these were real people. And, and so they don't deserve bullets. <laughs> they, did, they deserve to, to feel like. So this was a presentation I made on Wyatt Earp once. Um, and what I want you to see here is a couple of things. One is there's no bullet here. So now we're talking personality. He comes from, and, and Four words tell me what I need to know to, to tell you and, and to begin to tell you a story. That he's born in, in Pella, Iowa. And you can go there today and the house is still there and, and talk about his family and Nicholas, his father, who was a rapscallion who pretended to be a justice out in the bar. I mean, it's just, it's just smart. And, they, and because he behaved that way, they had to travel quite often because <laughs> he got caught and had to move. So that's what I get. And that's the minimum. I get that out of four words. I got your attention focused on that, and it's human. Then all I need to tell you is, that is, is this. We get rid of the Midwest, and in 1864, the family came to Colton, California, out here. Right? And, and this is the next thing you try to do, is to, as much as you can, connect it to things that people are familiar with. Um, all right, Colton is out here off the Riverside Freeway, off the 15. Now, Sonny, I don't need to show you a map. You live here. You know how to get to San Bernardino. And, well, you're going right by the Herb Homestead when you, when you do that. He, by the way, is not buried there. He's buried in San Francisco in a Jewish cemetery with his uh, wife. If he ever did marry her, there is no evidence of that. I want to sit there. <laughs> uh, the next thing is 64. Then the family came back in the middle because the father got a chance to be a constable in Lamar, Missouri. His father, then that tells me I just need to tell you about the way he behaves. And then this is why it was first entry in the law enforcement. He becomes deputy constable under his father. Now it feels, to me, it would feel different if I had bullets there. And if all that information is up at one time, you're already looking down to Missouri or to law enforcement. And that takes away from it. So, the point here is things that pop, um, a font that is large enough to be read from anywhere in the room, uh, you have the material come in in the order you want it to come in, and by dimming it after you've talked about it, you keep attention on the topic you want. Now, as, as I would say immodestly, you know, how, uh, as marvelous as that list looks, you've got to think about how much better it would be with some kind of illustration to really personalize it. So that's the next thing on the handout I gave you, is whenever possible, use a graphic. Avoid clip art. Clip art just then do it. You can find pictures of just about 
anything you want on the internet. All the pictures that I use um, in the presentations I make from the library in ancient Alexandria to uh, the Thomas Jefferson and, and Jefferson's relatives and children and, and anything. The, the pictures of all those people, all those places, all those things, they're out there. And they are surprisingly easy to find. Surprisingly easy to find. You just have to keep refining it. But if you want it, it's out there. Whenever you get a graphic, try to get something that in some way your audience will connect with. Um, because it's a universal feeling or something they're familiar with. And best of all, if it has some kind of an emotional impact. And the more familiar, the greater the emotional impact, the less need for words. And that's what you want, because that means you then to deliver the words. Something symbolic works. Sometimes you can get a message across with something that just shows an attitude or, or symbolizes something much better than a list of words to explain it. Let me show you. And, and remember, the key is minimalist. Here, here's some examples. This site was a thing I made for school administrators about rethinking their processes. All right, so here we got a light shining there. Uh, I see this as a light shining there. When I showed Cheryl this, she said, well, it looks like somebody's foot and a light has been on. And never tell anybody that because then they will begin to see it. They just tell you that's a, that's a light. And a flash. Now, look at the difference between there are four elements to rethinking the, the, the role of a, of a particular person in, in an organizational hierarchy. The purpose of the position and the, 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 the person who occupies it. The role that that person plays. Questions about money, financing it and what they do, handle and such. And then what kind of person should be in there. Now think about this. I could give you those four without the light. And it's four words, and it's economical, and it will tell me what to tell you. But it doesn't put them under a spotlight in the sense that now these are the things you should be looking for. This is what we want to look at. Now in this case, because these four interact in, in life, the purpose, the role of money, and the people, I don't dim the one that came previously. Because I want this to be cumulative rather than progressive. So it's sequential. So we do it. We do it that way. But see the difference I think the graphic makes. Now, look at this. Here's a talk. I mean, really, what kind of woman marries a gunfighter? There's some really interesting stories about that. Wild Bill Hickok, for example, married um, Agnes Lake, who was the first female circus owner in the United States, and she was a certified in the cage lion tamer. Clyde Beatty, I mean, whip and chair, she is in there. There's something delicious about a lion tamer marrying a gun tiger. You wonder what their domestic arguments are like. <laughs> now, this, you know, this is, this is all right. It get, comes in, now watch, let me show you again how it, the way it comes. I set it so I don't have to click it again after a second. We get the gunman's women and then the love lives comes in. But there's a different feel if you put a graphic with it. Now, they, that, that's a little more of an attention grabber from my perspective. If you don't think so, then you go the other way. But for me, I just like, pictures like that. I took that off the cover of a book on Doc Holliday. Um, what you do is you put the book right there take the picture, email the picture to yourself, take it out of your email, save it as a photo, insert it into your slide. And, and as you take it as a photo, you can then run it through whatever photo processing you use to change the brightness and the contrast and the colors on it, and crop it, whatever else you want to do. But I think this, is, this has more of an impact. Sometimes, and this is, as I look around this room, this is, this is probably a workable slot. Because you were going to the movies in 1962. And it, 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 
you're going to recognize James Stewart, John Wayne, and Lee Martin. Mm -hmm. You might remember the story, the, kid, the, the man who shot Liberty Valance. Now, believe it or not, I use this in a presentation about the first Christmas story. Um, and, and, but, but it'll make the connection. As you know, the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Luke are different. One creates a, a, a Roman census and a necessary trip to Bethlehem and all that. The other one says the kid was born at home and there, the star was over the house and the wise men came to Nazareth. What happened over the centuries is that those two are blended. And so now you see Christmas icons and such and you've got the star and the wise men in Bethlehem. Well, that, they didn't do that. They didn't come in it according to, you know, each way. But now, you talk about Christmas, and when this Christmas comes, look at the decorations are. It's blended. So, you put it together. Well, the, the, the background in this movie was the man who shot Liberty Mountains. And they, they, everybody believed the man who shot is this mild-mannered you know, attorney part-time fry cook, played by James Stewart. But the truth is, John Wayne shot him, you know, from the shadows in the, in the dark. And for 40 years, um, James Stewart's character is credited with killing this abusive outlaw, Liberty Mountains. But after 40 years in his political career, his legal career, wildly successful, and he's a senator from Arizona, and he can't live with a lie anymore. I didn't kill, I didn't kill Liberty Mountains. So he tries to tell, on a train, he tries to tell a newspaper reporter, it's all legend, I didn't kill him. It's, it's all legend, it's all legend. And the newspaper reporter looks at him and says, this is the West, sir. When the legend becomes the truth, they print the legend. <laughs> all right, so, here's the gospel that says, Jesus is born in Nazareth, and there's the star, and there's the wise men. Here's the gospel that says there's a Roman census and they got to go to Bethlehem and all that. When the legend becomes the truth, we print the legend. So, an audience this age can connect with that. An audience, generation, two generation, my grandchildren, you'd be just roll their eyes, you know. That's, that's, that's why I make them watch old movies so they can understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> now, other times, you wanted things that will represent things. Like, um, I was talking about trying to, to uh, as a school administrator and working with your staff, to share every good experience you possibly can. So you find a picture that is just a consummate good experience. These are the guys at NASA when they got the word that the first Mars probe had landed safe. I mean, I don't like, is that just sheer joy? All right, now that you can then talk to people about if you are successful in that way. Look at the Ponzi craze. And the next time you want to get people to work with you and for you, you ask, and instead of me telling you or citing statistics that the odds go up that they will work with you, all you got to do is show them, putting their hands up. Just that tells you that they will come together with you. And then you can show the same emotions, <laughs> failure. Well, you know, I don't want to work with him again. It was awful, it was a loser. And so you, then in school, you try to carve a role for yourself in, in positive events. But see, the graphic makes the difference. And here we look at the, the founding fathers. We use this for the, the um, uh, presentation on separation of church and state. Now, just a, a sense of it. Picture like that just communicates the depth of religion, religious feeling in the in the founding fathers. And since it was the 18th century, the Vitruvian man here, the, the notion of, of science and attention, uh, the role of religion and trying to make it fit. So many of the colonies were founded for different religious reasons, and now we have a society that works, and that's as useful as today. You got to make those things fit together. But here's the one that, that says it. Where it's like the, the Walgreens ad. We're at the intersection of, of uh, religion and politics. Now that tells you there, it sets a scene for separation of church and state. 
here we are. And there are two different paths. So I won't, I won't spend more time, but sometimes you can communicate, <laughs> just say, you just think, and that's, that's just so much better than a list of words over here about what happens when you promise more than you can do and, and uh, things you can't deliver on all that kind of stuff. This, this had to do with a presentation on the, the, the dangers inherent in mission statements for organizations, because sometimes you just can't do it. But that says more than any list of words is going gonna, is gonna to say. Sometimes you don't need hardly anything. Um, this was in, in a talk about Caesar Augustus, emperor of Rome. Uh, he was Julius Caesar's nephew and adopted son. And Julius, of course, was Rome until uh, that unfortunate day in March of 44. But, Augustus then became emperor, and while he didn't want to ex exceed his father, he certainly wanted to be regarded as an equal. Well, Julius Caesar had reorganized the calendar and named a month after himself, July, and gave it 31 days. When Augustus took the throne, he wanted nothing less. August had 30 days then. And he changed the calendar and gave himself 31. So he is the equal of Julius. But I don't have to have up that, all that. Imagine that up there in words as opposed to just, here's the calendar. It's a lot that I'm overdoing. But see how much that says about what Rome was and the way it did it. Sometimes you've got to create your own. This was for an explanation of school culture. Uh, schools are cellular. You can make a joke and say a teacher comes to work and goes to her cell, which is the last one. And most of the time, people who work in schools uh, have very little interaction with other adults. They spend it with, with students. So here's the point, and it's all done with the greatest economy of language, is that structure affects culture. I get the whole concept in three words and eight dots. And so that's what I want you to see. Now, sometimes you can do even more. This was another church and state one. Uh, the Enlightenment, science coming, Newton coming, and the idea is trying to break through the, the, the mysticism, the, the superstition, the ignorance of the dark age. So I tell you, it's Enlightenment ideas that are crashing through, and then the effect it has in illuminating. Now, all that is, is the same slide with different things added to it and changing the color on the upper right. You can, you can do all those kind of things, but it says so much more than words, just like this. And notice that with this one, the way this unfolds mimics the gears. And so instead of a lot of words telling you enlightenment science interacting with Christianity and forced changes, you, you can reduce it to that a little bit. Gary? Yeah. I'm going faster without questions. But well, just interrupt me anytime. Like that. Well, on the last slide, how do you make it go around like that? Oh, okay. That's, that's, I'll show you. And how do you make that uh, enlightenment thing change color? Oh, well, okay, that takes, that takes two slides. I'll show you, I'll show you how to do that. This, with this, I get the images I want. And then you go up here, across the top, to animations. You click on animations. Now you got to select uh, how you want it to, to open. So here's, here are these two gears, and this is the box that they were in. This is the photograph that I set in there. Now, I've got different ways I can animate this. And this will show me, as I pick each one, what it's going to, to do. And with something like floating in or flying in, if I pick it, then I get this effect option over here, and I can decide which way I want it to come in. Okay? Um, I can make it split, either coming in or, whoops, slipped off of there. I can make it come in, or I can make it go out, or I can make it go horizontally, up and down. Um, I can make it come out of a shape or make it like an old um, 
uh, silent movie. You know how they would close the scene or open one? All right, well, we can do we can do that. I took the wheel here because it seemed to me to be parallel to the note, the motion of the of the uh, gears. So once you've got that in and it's it's in the way you want it to be. And you got the wheel where? Animations. And animation. Up, you go up here to animation. What you have here, see this is this is just a picture I inserted. You bring that in and position it where you want it to be. And then you stay, as long as the box is selected, you say that you want it to. Not, this all goes gray when the object is not selected. But when the object is selected and has the box around it, all these come on. You pick the animation that you want. And I want this one. And so then I click on it. Now there is a little box here. They say the animation pane, which is useful. It shows up over here. And that will tell me what I have for each of these different things and the way in which they are brought in. And this is where also, if I want to, I can change the way things happen afterwards. If I want to dim something, like you saw before, if text comes in and then I dim it, this is, this is the way you can do it. I'll show you more in a, in a second, but that's, that's, how you, that's how you do that. Okay? Anything else you got? All right, then, um, here we are. Now, um, just again connecting with people. Some, so, sometime everybody's had somebody look at it that way. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole lot more than going into some psychological dissertation about interpersonal relations and attitudes of superiority. You just want to kick that guy. <laughs> um, but sometimes you get a real something that does just in a second. This was about the first Christmas, and this is where I wanted to talk about Herod's attempt to slaughter the incidents, kill every male child two years and younger. You don't need to think, think of that, what that communicates in comparison to a list of words. This, this is visceral, words are not. So, you want to use a graphic, avoid clip art, but cartoons are good if they're appropriate but they're not juvenile. This is the kind of crap that comes out of clip art. You know, you don't want any part of that. What you want is something like Rich Sundin sent to me. I mean, it seems just so appropriate to our time today, country day. Now, this, is, now this, this speaks to it. I may use this in talking about the Declaration of Independence. This is a good, this is a good thing to have up when people come into the room. It sets a, a, a tone. This is always just funny. Uh, if you're going to talk about the workplace, something like this, this grizzled cowboy, you know, he's, he's not angry, he's just, just a lot of things they didn't tell me about. And, and that's, that's true, no matter where you are. For people in events, try to find photos, and it, whenever you can, if it's happened or they lived before the age of photography, then you, you got to go for fine art. Um, but look at the difference here. Imagine this without Einstein's picture. It's still profound, but it, it's not as, as good as, as having it. I gave a talk on the Earth Brothers, who just somehow just fascinating. All right, they, they are available. You can see what they look like. They don't look like Val Kilmer or Sam Elliott, or, but, but this is what they look like. That's Virgil, this is James, Wyatt and uh, Morgan, and they're available for you. And you want to show a family that, and the, and you put them all on the same screen because they were really close. They were really interactive, and you can do that. And that's so much better than some stupid drawing. For people before the age of photography, you find a fine portrait like Sir Isaac Newton, and then if you can find something that's fun to go with it, nature and nature's laws they lay hid by night. God said, let Newton be in a whole new life. I think that's just, I think that's just wonderful. Now, there's no likeness of Herod the Great at all, not even on ancient coins. There are some of his sons, the few who survived. He killed most of his own kids. 
But this is a, a, a man that captures the sinister, threatening nature of the man. And that's, that's, that communicates more than anything I can tell you about him otherwise. You want to see John Adams? We got paintings, but sculpture gives you a three dimension. And that, that is useless. Useful, not useless. Uh, and the same here with the young Jefferson. Think of this, his three accomplishments, but without the picture, without it. This brings it more to life. This is the guy who did it. No photography, really, before the Civil War. So this is in 1755. You find things that are historically accurate renditions, and you use them. Um, nothing, no, but everything's speculation about the Library of Ancient Alexandria. But you look for those things that appeared with historical works, real, real, as close as they can, they can imagine, be able to substantiate that it probably looked like that because of the way things were done. The last thing, and then we'll, we'll get hands on completely, is I've been seeing, I've been going from slide to slide. That's transitions. Most of the time, you want to minimize distraction and you stay simple. So, like with this one, you see that we go from uh, the picture of the library, and it just, it, well, let me go back. Here's the library. We go, see that just fades in, and then the next one just fades in. It's simple, it's not distracting. So I want to stay simple most of the time. But some of the time, you can use the transitions to create certain effect. Now you do transitions this way. Here's your slide. You go up here to the top where it says transitions. And as soon as you click on that, and you've got this slide here, all your options come up. And you can have it go um, from one slide to the next in a particular way. Generally, fade is the most simple, least distracting. But you can push something out of the way, if you like. Uh, or like an old movie, you can wipe it across. Here comes Buck Rogers with his... I can make it split. I can sort of make it fade out and then reveal. I can give it random bars and do all kinds of shapes. You know, whatever I want. I can uncover the next one. I can cover this one. There's just no end of, of the options to do. But I use a simple fade on this one because we're going now to a text thing. That makes no difference. But suppose now, I, the next slide, I want to create an effect. So here we go. Use transitions to minimize distraction and to create an effect. Here's an example. This is when Jim Smith was attacked by a grizzly bear. I mean, now, going from a sedate slide like this, and suddenly, there it is. This bear's in your face. And he comes further when he disappears. This was for one on California cities. This is Santa Barbara. She was um, condemned for her Christianity by her father. And uh, when nobody else would execute her, he took a sword and beheaded his own daughter. Now what happens when you do that? What happens when you Lightning struck him and killed him. But, so there is a transition up here called flash. And that's, that's a whole lot better than if I were to have it dissolved from here. Um, what you see now is, is not nearly so dramatic at all. But if you take this one, then, boom, now, because we've all experienced that. Then you can go back to the scene. I leave it white at the top because I want to see these are all subdivided. She's the major scene. People who are in danger of getting hit by lightning. Uh, now, with maps and things, you want to get, I want to show the progression of Sebastián Vizcaíno up the coast in 1602. So we went from San Diego 
to Catalina. But it's part of the set. It's like being in a in a uh, a gallery. So in doing that, then instead of fading or jumping or anything like that, we just kind of turn the screen, and there there she is. With maps, you want to highlight locations, use a, a, a visible scale, and then track journeys. I use the gallery slider, so it looks like one coming up. The, 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 the scale on this is that any reasonably educated person knows what part of the world it is. So here we've got, we've got the Middle East. And in a couple of words, you tell them what shows in brown is what Alexander conquered. His favorite, of course, was Alexander Egypt. But Alexander was not a modest soul. So with a click, you can show this. That ultimately, he founded 23 cities named Alexander. But this is, this is a way to, to bring him in and emphasize how many of them there are. Um, with something like this, talking about uh, a cattle drive here, there's Clint Eastwood, Bill Faber, uh, uh, played by Eric Fleming, and Chef Willie, who's one of the drovers, who, if you're old enough, you might remember in 1958, had a great musical hit, Purple People Eater. Uh, but now, this is a group, and Rawhide is a trailer. So, I want to show you where the trail is. And we do it like that. And so I'll show you how to do that. And this is Jim Kleiman again, and where we know he went. All I need is that line, and a date where Fort Atkinson to tell you that he crawled, or he was wounded, and he crawled all that distance. Okay, so those are the general thoughts, the general approaches to the way I take it. Now, if you got your device, let's do a little hands-on stuff. So, uh, open up a, a slide uh, that looks something like, just open up anything, and this is what it'll look like. You got it? Oh, okay. Now, we can add the title up here. Type it in. Now, you got, you got some choices. Uh, first thing we may want to do is you select it, and you go back to home, and here, Right there is the font color selection. So I'm going to want this to be the title, so I'm going to make this yellow. It gives me that. And then, since I've got a good deal of space in here, I'm going to kick up, and I can do it one of two ways. Either by opening this and selecting the size I want, and it will change as I go down the scale. Or, I can just click on to increase it on this A, well, cap, big capital A, or to reduce it by clicking on the smaller one. So I'm going to use this so that I keep kicking it up and I can see it the whole time. Um, maybe it'll look better in the center. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it there. And we've got, now, I've got a choice of just having that appear. If I go to look at it now, there it is. Gary, can I have one question? Sure. We still have a white background. How do we get a black background? Um, you've got to pick a, a different template. How do we do that? All right. Uh, go up here to design. Design. At the top. Right. You click on design. All right. And it will bring up all these different preloaded templates. Okay. And as you scroll over them, you will probably have different and probably more than I do. You'll see the different types of them. And you can, you can pick which one. Okay. And by going over here to this little um, bar, you can click down and you discover that there are a whole lot more. Okay. And so if you want a dark one, um, pick one like that. Now, every slide then in your program will be that. Uh, so it will be that, that color in that background. Jim? So related question. Once you've got your slide, you present all that, and it has a black background, and you want to do a printout, you don't use a lot of ink. Yeah. You don't want a black background, because you want, right. you want to check out the same content, but if you want to do a printout on white paper, can you just go with that same? Yeah, but if you've, been using, if you've been using yellow or white, um, 
text, you're going to have to change that yeah. too to, to black. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, in the main, uh, I would advise against printing out your whole program. Uh, I, I don't see much of a value. Uh, but if you, want, if you want to, you're better to, to take it to a, a white one. And then working, we don't have time today to do it, there is a, a, a master slide where you can control which font. So you can go there and change all the lettering in black and, and pick a white back and, you, and you'd be able to have it. All right, I'm going to undo this because I want to get back to, to my slide. Now, I'll look at this word. I can decide if I want to change this. So if you select it and you go up here to animations, now I can decide on how I want this to come in. Let's say I just want to do it basically, I just want it to fade in. Okay? Uh, if I decide I want it to fade in, I can do a couple of things. You go over here to the animation pane, and you bring down this menu. And we've got some effect options here. One of which is, you'll see the way in which it arrives. It comes in. This says, all at once. If you click down on that, you get two other choices. By word, by letter. So, let's say that I want to do it by letter. some reason, I want to spell it out. Now, uh, I want to do it by letter. When I say by word or by letter, I will, and this will ask me how much of a delay do I want between each letter. If I just leave it at tenth of a second, ten percent, it's, it's going to look just like that. Like it comes to myself. But if I jack this up and say that I want it way up here, now watch when it comes in. It will come in a letter at a time. And I can spell it across the way I want it to happen. So what did you set it on to get that? that to get idea? that, you go up to animations yeah. and select the kind of animation you want to have. Keep the, this animation pane open. This is that one up there opens and closes this box. And anything that you have selected to animate, there will be a piece here. There's a little menu on the right side. You bring that down, and it will give you effect options. And so here you can then click whether you want it by all at once, by word, or by letter. And if you do it by word or by letter, you can then select the integral between each word and letter. See, if I leave it at 10, it comes in, but it doesn't have quite the same effect. So you said it, at the, yeah, my question was, you said it at 20 of what? I couldn't read it. Um, I, where did I kick it up to? I kicked it up to about 30, I think. Okay. Let's see.
But in this case, I prefer to have none. So I will check that, and from now on, each of these things will come in without bullets. This is too small. This is too small. This is this comes in at 32. Uh, if I'm only going to use three or four words to tell me what I need to know, then I will select it. I go back up here to the A increase, and I will kick it up to get the kind of uh, um, visual I want for you to be able to see. Now, let's say on this first point, um, first and second point, I don't want them both to just show up. See, if I, if I have the slide, this is what you're going you're gonna to get. It's, they're there. I don't want to do that. I want this to come in after the title. So I'm going to select it. Now I'm going to go up to animation. I'm going to get to animations, and I'm, the easiest way to get something to come across, the quickest way, is to have it white. So I've selected this. I'm going to go select white. Sometimes I have to click it a couple times. It might be easier in the program you have. But when I, collect, I, I selected it and I clicked on white, over here in the box, over here, um, it showed up. That now that has been selected. And I've got a, a quick thing up here that it comes in on click, or I can make it come in on its own, which I'll show you in a minute. So now I can go here and I can do a couple of things. Back to the same menu, effect options. Now I come in and I want, because it's wiping, um, I'm not going to mess with the speed of it. But what I want to have happen is when I'm ready to go to the next point, I want to go here. I keep pointing the screen. I had to put this up here. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So again, I want to talk about this point. I want to bring it in. So I animate it. I go to the animation pane. Go to the menu. Go down here to effect options. This opens up. The middle one is don't dim. Well, I want this one to dim. So I have some choices here about what happens after animation. If I want, I can hide the whole thing on the next mouse click. I'll click it, and it just it's just it's just gone. Um, it'll hide it after animation. I mean, it'll come in, and you'll see it, and it'll disappear. What I'd rather do is what you've seen in the previous slides I showed you is I want to dim it. So what I want to do is pick a color. I want a color that is going to be compatible visually, comfortably. Um, aesthetically what I have. So I generally use this blue. And then I click OK. Now what will happen is a white, I want this to be white, but I want the effect to be from the left. I'm going to save that so it doesn't fall on me again. This one I'm going to have come in automatically with the very with the opening of the slide so it'll be there. Now the slide title will come on first, then my first point will come on. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the second one. I'm going to select the second point, I'm going to go up to animations, I'm going to tell it that I want to wipe it. When I click it, you see over here in the animation box, the second point is selected. And now I want it also to come in from the left. So I'm going to now save that so I won't lose it. So now our slide has things in a particular order. So here's what's going to happen. The slide comes on. Here's the title. I click again. Here comes my first point. You can see I didn't keep the left there. But now I talk about my first point, and then it dims, and the second point comes in. I can have it, but it's not wiping the way I want it. So I sometimes will have to go back and do this again. On my program, probably not if you have a later one, um, it, it doesn't always hold. So I do it and then save it. And now it should work properly. Here's the title comes in. Now I, yeah, darn. <laughs> Why is that not? All right, one more try, and then we're just going to have to come up with 
different way. Uh, try the effect from the left. Say Yeah. When I had in the second point, it didn't show up over here on the right on that animation. Then you may have to click it a couple of times. With, with mine, um, it doesn't always stay. I'm going to show you an alternate way because this is a this is a preset. Do you have to click every time you change points, or can you do it automatically? Um, I can do it automatically. I'll show you. Guys, darn! I don't know. There, the second one worked. Um, let's say that I make my first point, and I or I don't want to have to click to bring this first one in. So what I'll do is I'll take this first one. And it's animated. I come over here. You see up here where it says on click? I can open a little menu there and I can have it come in after the previous. So let's try one more time with this. All right, now when I come up, when I open this slide, the title should come in and then the first point will come in automatically. They, I didn't have to click for the second one. It, it saves some time. Now, I, the, the other one is set for click, but I can, I can change it. Now, what I can also do, if I want, is I can, with the animation pane, uh, I can change any of the number of ways I want it to come in. Uh, and I can change how long it takes to get it. See the duration here? Mm -hmm. uh, that's set at about half a second. Well, I can make it longer, or I can make it shorter. Um, that, however, I want it, I want it to happen. Now, let's say that the first point has to do with uh, a person. So, I want to bring in a picture. So, I'm, I'm of that person. So, I'm going to go up here. To the upper left, you see where it says insert? I'm going to insert, and I get all these choices on things to insert. What I'm going to insert is a picture. So I got a picture here. This will then open my picture file. You have to endure for a second while I get past all the family pictures. But I, I put, because I want them all grouped together, the pictures I use for uh, slides and stuff are generally, uh, say, D, Z at the end. Like, here are some pictures that I'm going to use for the 4th of July presentation. So, I want a picture now of uh, Richard Henry Lee, who uh, made the, first introduced the notion that we should declare independence. So, I'm putting Lee in. Now there he is. Now I'm going to bring him out of the way so he doesn't sit over the text. And now I want him to come in following this. So I'm going to, let's, let's just change this. Okay, I brought my picture in. Now I can do the same thing. I select my picture and I can change the size as I want. Or I can make it smaller, but whatever size, once you know that you want it. Mm -hmm. Then you get you select it. Now we go back up just like we did with the text to animations. Now because this picture is selected, I can decide how to bring him in. I can have him fly in, I can have him just fade in. If I fade him in, I can decide how long it takes him to come he can float in, and again, from any direction, I can get him to split, coming in or out, uh, get him to wipe. We can do it like an old movie, bring him in like that, or have him come out like that. Now, let's say I like that, bringing him out that way. What I can do here now is I've decided to have this open on him, but it takes two seconds for that to happen. It's kind of slow. And you lose interest. So we go up here to this guideline here at 2.0 and I'm going to take it down to a one second. 
entrance rather than a two. Now, watch him come in. And he will come more quickly. But let's say I, I want him right up there with uh, what I'm talking about. Here. So here's my animation for the picture. In the animation pane, I go down here and I want him to come in automatically right after his name. I want him to have Richard Lee and then I want him to appear. So instead of me having to click to get him, I'm going to put this on after previous. With me? After what? After previous. Meaning that he will come in after the last thing that appeared. Now I select this and I move it up. You see this says reorder. I'm going to move him up to where he's going to come in right after his name. So this is going to open up and it's going to show me Richard Lee and right after it says Richard Lee, good old Dick's going to appear. And it's going to look just like this. How are you going to reorder How did you reorder it? Uh, if you get back here, uh, down here where the animation pane is open, at the bottom, okay. you see reorder. Okay, so you select the, the thing you want and you and you move it. So here he is selected. I can move it down or up, but I want him to come in right after his name. So that's where I move it to. I don't have a reorder. Down at the bottom. The bottom of the animation paint box. What you it may be a little different. What year program do you have? Then it'll somewhere in the animation paint. We can I'll find a way. We'll look for it. Or there'll be a tutorial. But somewhere there's a way to reorder the way they come. 10. 2010. Yeah. Uh, now, let's say that the next person I want to talk about here is uh, somebody else. So, uh, stay on the right side. I want Richard Henry Lee to disappear after I get talk about it. So I can go to the picture in the animation pane, and I can bring it down again the menu. I go to effect options, and see where it says don't dim after I'm done with it. Here now, I will say hide on the next mouse click. And I click on that, and then I click OK. So now Richard will come in. And there he is. So when I get done, when I get done talking about him, he'll disappear, and my next point will come up, and I can have the next person's picture. Okay, yours will work some some way similar. Okay, now that's that's how you go about bringing in uh, text and bringing in slide pictures. Any questions about that? Try. Another one. Here. You get to slide the hand like you just set it up. Why am I not doing it? I don't know what to tell you. Mine frequently. Follow along, I got it all set up like you said, but the slide's not animated. How do I get it to? The animations. You got you to select. Yeah. I did that. All right. Now these, these come on. Yeah. All right. And you slide to work. Okay, you pick one. Yeah. Is it over here? Does it show up over there? Where, where does it tell you about wanting to? You got it set up to come in after previous. Change that to on click. All right. Now we're ready to slide. You must, oh, oh, how do you run the slot? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, there, there should be somewhere on the menu. Uh, yeah, if you go to home, um, slideshow, here you go. Now, you can choose to run from the beginning or from the, this slide. Click on that. There you go. Oh, okay. okay. And That's then, the you, now you click again and in comes the picture. It's just, it looks different.
Gary, I missed the part on the um, It seemed like you made a file of pictures to go with a particular topic, with a particular batch. Uh -huh. And you create a file and put all those photographs in there. Yeah, I, I create a file like... Uh, Okay, that's okay. Rick said he knows how to do that. Yeah, okay. Well, I, in my pictures file, I created a new folder that says 4th of July. Uh -huh. Now I just go on the internet and I look for people. These are all signers of the declaration and the declaration itself right there. That's a neat one. That's got Benjamin Franklin's editing notes in his own handwriting. Um, so let's say I want to insert that. I, I know where it is. It's in the file I have for the 4th of July. Mm -hmm. and, and that's all you're going to do. So you find it on the internet, you save it, you put it in that file. Then when you go to, to make a, a presentation, um, all I got to do is tell it this is the one I want and to insert it, and there it is. Okay? Can you do that with videos too? Yeah, I'm not that sophisticated, but you can do it with audio clips and you can do it with videos. And the newer um, you know, editions of PowerPoint, I am told, make that pretty pretty easy. Uh, I'd like to be able to, to show moving pictures of something. Uh, particularly if it was, like I'm going to give a talk on World War One or World War Two or something like that, I, and there, there is film available, video clips, I would really like to be able to, to embed that sort of thing. There are tutorials on YouTube to show you how to do it. Gary, I'm sorry. So when you go find the picture on the internet, you click on it, and then what do you, where, how do you move it into? Oh, uh, all right. Hang on. Oh, you know how to do it. Yeah, Rich knows how to do it. Everybody know how to do it, so I won't bother with that. Go to Google. And you know how to save a picture from the internet? Just get a picture and put it in your um, Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I won't take your time okay. to do that. Rich can show you how to do that. Okay, now again, you look at this slide and it comes with this preset. I tend sometimes because I want, maybe I'm a control freak or something, uh, I want to be able to do it exactly the way I want it. So what I will do is select this and delete it the whole box, and that one too, although I may put the title there. I may use that one to put the title there. So this is going to be um, text boxes. And all I'm going to do again here is we're going to turn it yellow so it pops up. We're going to make it larger, and this time I want to send it. And I want it to appear when I go to the slide, so I'm not going to mess with it. It's just going to be there. Now, I've got to decide what I want to put in. So instead of using the preset, I'm going to go to this little symbol here. This is a text box. Um, it should be on what they call the ribbon here, on yours. If it's not, you can, you can get it onto there by um, dealing with, with options. You should have some kind of a ribbon there with a few icons. If you want more or the one you want is not there, you click on this dart at the end and it opens options for you. More commands down here and you click on that and then they'll show you anything that you want to have on that ribbon available for you. And all you got to do is um, Click it, click one, um, I'll just pick this one, and click add, and it adds it there. So you say, okay, now when you get back out here, this group icon that I just decided I want to have available all the time appears up here on the ribbon. So on the ribbon up here, I have a text box. A text box is just, just what it says. You can draw the box the way you want it just like this, and then you can put text in it. Now on my program, and I've got to figure out how to change it, the default always seems to be from the, from the, the uh, justify. 
uh, on, the, on the left. I don't want that. I want it to be over here on the left, so it, it writes the way I write. Now, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to say these are the words for person one that I want to talk about. Okay, notice that that came up with a new Times Roman, Times New Roman font. I don't want that. So what I do is I select that, I go up here to font, and up come my fonts. The most recent fonts I've used are always going to be at the top of this list. So I'm going to pick Tahoma, that, which is what this is too. Now, this has come to Tahoma. I'm back here and it tells me it's 24. That's too small. So I'm going to kick it up about like that. Person number one to talk about. Okay, now I have complete control of this box. And using the grid and the arrows, the, the um, directional arrows on your keyboard, you can move it once you get to the box. You can move it over to where you want it to be. My best experience has been when I make the box cover the, the length of the screen. Then if I decide I want to put it in the center, which is, which is here, um, it actually will be in the center of the slide. You can see that it, by the grid, but it is, it's lined up right in the center. Now I can take this one and I can animate it. So I select the text, I go up to animations, I pick the animation that I want to have. In this case again, I'm going to, just because it, it works easily, I'm going to tell it I want to wipe it. And I want to wipe it from the left. Pay attention to this. Save it. Now, I also I have it over here. It's coming in on the, on my click just like I wanted to. But when I'm done with it, I'm done talking about that. I'm going to fix it so that whoops. I'm going to fix it so it dims again. So don't dim. I'm going to change to the blue. Now when I get done talking about it and I click on it, it's going to dip. I'm not going to fight with that. I'm just going to fade it in. Okay, now, because I'm, I'm going to want some space for other things, I'm going to change, you go back to the home screen where all your choices are. I'm going to change this to left, working from the left, so it's off, it's off to that side. Now what I've done with this so far is I've animated it to come in, to fade in, and by looking at my options, I've also said that when I'm ready to move on to the next one, it's going to dim. Here's the part that, that I like and makes it fairly easy. I select this box, the whole box. You can see that, it's, that the cursor is not in among the letters. What I've selected is the whole box. So now I'm going to go up here and I'm going to tell it I want to copy that, that box. And then I want to paste that copy onto this slot. So I click on paste. And there it is. But it's just about on top of the other. So now I can grab it and I can move it down and line it up by using the grid. Now notice that it caught, when it copied it, it copied not only the information that is in it, but it also copied all the information that I in, in imparted to this one. So this one now, when I look at this one, it too is already set up to dim when I get done with it. And it is set up that my animation is going to be the same. If I can make it. I don't know why this won't hold that. Alright, I'll try one more time again. Okay. 
Now watch what happens. We're going to watch, we're going to look at this slide, and I'm going to see the slide from there. There's my title. I click, and in comes my first topic. When I'm done with it, I get done with it, I click again, it, did, it dims, and in comes my second one. When I go to the talk about the next one, this one will dim, and I can do that each time. Each time I copy it, the box, from the home screen, I copy the box, and I paste it, and it's going to be right next to it. I move it down, and change the wording that I want. Because you're copy pasting it, the, the, what you did in the animation box is. I'm sorry. It, because you copy pasted it, what's in the animation box is set up to. The copy entire, I, I copy and paste the entire box. Right. Yeah. And then but you could change it if you wanted to, right? I'm sorry? You could change that last one if you wanted it to be different. Yes. Now, let's say this is the last slide on the screen, and I don't want it to dim. Well, it's already set up over here, right. the whole thing. Right. So I go over here, come down to options, and I tell it now, go do. Okay. Okay. And then when I finish with it, what it will do is I go through these three, is that it will, one will come up, I'll talk about it, it will dim. Second one comes up, I'll talk about it, it will dim. Third one comes up, I talk about it, it doesn't dim, what it'll do is go right to the next slide. If you should by accident leave it so it dims, you're going to have to click it twice to get to the next slide. But that's, that's the way that you, an alternate way to bring in text the way you want. And you have complete control of it. I like it better than the other way. But you want to do whatever you like the best and whatever is easiest. I also can move the text box around and change the configuration of it. Let's say I want to move this over here because I want to put a picture of that person in there. Uh, so I can bring this over here, decide now that maybe what I want to do is put that text in the center so it looks better. Now I want to go back over here and I go up to insert, I go to my picture file, I decide that I want to have my picture of um, Jefferson and Adams Franklin presenting the uh, declaration to the Congress. So I fit that and I can make it fit right in there. So I can do it. So my, my point is I have complete control about the size and the location of each of these boxes. And each thing I do registers over here automatically. Whereas if I use the text box that comes with a screen like this, I don't have that kind of flexibility. It's a little more work to keep making each of these text boxes, but it pays off because you have control. Now, I select this picture. Here, I go to animations. I want the picture to just fade in. So I click fade and I click on it repeatedly until it shows up over here. And I want it to come in at the same time as I'm talking about person three. So I go to the to the up here, and I instead of coming in on a click, I tell it to come in with the previous. Now when I do this, this all will come in together. So I don't need to reorder. I want it to be right where it is. So it's going to come in. Here's my title. Here's person one. It dims. Here comes person two. It dims. Now person three and the picture show up. And then we're going on to the next slide. Okay? Make sense? Alright. We've got time. I'll show you one more thing and then We'll get together again some other time. Okay. Uh, let's say that, like the maps, uh, you, you, you want to do it. So let's, let's just, if you've got a slide that looks like that, just take all this off. Now we're going we're gonna to pretend that I have a map here. 
And we'll do that by going to the home screen, the home tab. And on the home tab, you'll see this box over here that has different shapes in it. Select a shape you like. I'm going to take this rectangle. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to draw a rectangle. We're going to pretend that, that is a map. Okay, you with me? Yeah. If I wanted a different color, I go up here to Shape Fill up here, and I can select the color I want to fill it. I'm going to leave it blue because the white or red or yellow will show against it. Now let's say that I've got a person, a, a place up here, and I want to show you that the person is coming from the northwest to the southeast. So what I do now is I've got my that there, and I go up here back to these things and I select a line out of this box. And then I'm going to bring it down here and I'm going to draw my line. He's not going to go in a straight line. He's going to move this way. Now that, that's not an easy line to see. So you go back up here to the, the shape outline. And that will allow you to do some things with the line. I can make the line thicker by going down here to where it says weight. And I go down here and I can pick up a line like that. Okay, you with me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Now, let's say that whoever this person was got as far as he did and then he um, had to change directions. So, we're going to give him a change in direction by drawing line out here. You have to go back and get the line again, right? Yeah, go back and get the line. And once again, that's, that's not as big a line as I want, so I go to shape outline, go down to the weight of the line, and I pick the size line I want. And my line doesn't show up. It must be the same color as the blue background. Well, then you can go up to um, shape fill and or maybe you can just go right to uh, uh, change the color again. Font. Shape outline. I'm going to shape outline and change the color, but why doesn't it say that with mine? Why doesn't it show up? Because you're already done. How can I change the color of the line before I go to one? Uh, you go to shape on this one, you go to shape outline and you can pick the color of the line you want. Yeah, exactly. When I first draw the line, I just had two dots. Yeah. Nothing between it. Well, then it, you're probably your default is whatever color you've got in this rectangle. Yeah. Okay. Just change it or not. Just, yeah, just go and change it. Okay, so now you can do that, and I want to I check one thing here about it. I've selected that line. Maybe if I copy and paste it, and I take the end here, I can, I can turn the line once I put it in. So now let's say I want to show that it went this way. So I put that line there, like that. All right, you with me so far? We've created what looks, what looks like a path. Um, a little harder to control are these that are squiggly lines up here, but we'll Try it. Um, you get out of here and you, you can get, a, you can get a, an arc. You have really, these you really have to play with. And it's easier on a real map where you've got a background. This I can turn to whatever angle I want. And then I want to, I want to bring it back over and connect to that. How can you do like a, let's say I just want to do a freehand? You know, yeah, there's, there's one. I'm not sure which one is the free end one. It's this one right there. The one down here in the corner, it comes when it comes down, it looks like oh, a yeah. pencil. Okay? Yeah. You can you can do that. Um, and again, yeah. um, because that line's not thick enough, you go to weight and you kick it up to whatever you want. Then you want to move it so that the end of it 
attaches to what you have on the tape and so that All right, so you got something we'll say now that looks like that. And we want to animate it. So let's go back here and we select our first line and we go to animations. And what I want to do now, and I hope the white is going to work this time, is I'm going to select white and I'm going to select down from the top. And look at the effect that it gives. It gives you the effect of, of uh, the thing. I, I can run a, a, a preview. It, it looks. Where's, where's my preview? Yeah, here, play. Now watch. See, it looks like it's moving down. So now I select the next one. I go to white. This time, I want the line to go up. So I select white, get it to it, make sure you do it until it registers over here. And I go up here now to unclick, and I don't want it unclick, I want it to come after the previous. You with me? Yeah. Okay. So now if I play this, watch what happens. It goes down and it goes up. Then I pick the next one, and we do the same thing again. White, until, I yeah, keep doing it until it grabs it. You take that, this time I want it to come down from the top again. So it looks like it's going that way. How did you get it to go from top to bottom? On, on white, once you've selected the effect, there's an effect options box over here. Oh, I see. And then you can select which way it goes. Okay? Yeah. All right, now, I, again, I don't want this on a click. I want this to follow the previous. So, I've got it on click. I'm going to put it on after previous. Now we get down to the last one. This is the hand-drawn one. And we'll do exactly the same thing. We'll go to white. I want it to, i got to do it until it picks it up. Did it there. I want it to wipe down and I want it to follow the previous. Now, watch what happens when we play. I'm going to go down here, or up here rather, and I can see it. I'm going to push play and watch what happens. It looks like the guy's following the road and then the river. Whoops. This one, I got, I got back in two. It wouldn't hold that effect. I don't know why this is so troublesome. All right, now I can play it. Oh! <laughs> See that we can. That's how we can track Jim Kleinman being born in Virginia in Illinois. Pardon me. How did you connect your last line with the third straight line? Uh, the two ends. It it it's in a thing like that when you draw it. So yeah. you select it and then you just move it until the ends are together. Then leave it there. Remove the selection. And it comes out. Okay? More than you want to know. It's a lot to absorb in a single shot. Yeah. Jacob, I think, has had enough. Thank you guys for coming, and particularly for your endurance. Um, there's some fun stuff you can do. You just got to play with it. You really just need to, need to play with it. But, <laughs> yeah, that's true. You need to know what, how to play. Yeah.